job that the West ruined them when it was globalist corporations that are ruining everything. And they're the ones screwing us over. That's right. We've lost our sanity as a country, as a society, as a planet. We've completely lost our sanity, and it's, we're going to pay for it. Well, the elite are committing suicide. They think they're suiciding the West. They think they're getting rid of the ladder where middle class could come up and new elites could threaten them. They think they're sewing things up with an age of ignorance when they're in basically Elysium bases, offshore, underground, and in controlled reservations. They're not going to be immune from this. I mean, this is insane, and it's not helping the third world. I mean, if they had, like, some type of free hydrogen power base, you could give money nationally to build reactors uh, in Africa and have real programs and entrepreneur programs to go over there and build up Africa and then make money with these people, I'd be all for it. Yeah, why don't they push that? Why is it that all these immigrants need to be accepted by every, every other country? Why can't we actually perform industry in places like Africa, different Africa? Because globalism doesn't allow that. If they keep them exactly. in squalor, they'll never develop and you get everything cheap. It's totally cutthroat. The globalists know to go with the most evil plan they can, just exempt themselves, and they'll win. That's why whatever the worst, most evil thing is, they'll do it. I mean, I studied the New World Order for 25 years, 23 intensely, 20 on air. And, Anthony, I just cannot believe how they got it all thought out. Then I'll read a book by Brzezinski or somebody, and I'm reading stuff, and I know what the next paragraph's going to be because I've already studied it so much. I'm, like, in their head. They, they admit all this. So Brzezinski wrote a book admitting how the, our government funded the Khmer Rouge to call 30% of the public. He made a joke. He goes, but I can't get in trouble because I had the Khmer Rouge did it and giggles. Basically in the article. I mean, it's just like, what, why? The debate is over. I mean, we're all arguing about tax rates and all of this kind of stuff as the major corporations pay no tax. They get everything made in China in, in places with suicide nets because the workers want to kill themselves for being paid one penny a day, like Apple using Foxconn. And then we are told that we're bad and that we need to let all the immigrants in and pay for them. And we're horrible people as they lord over us and laugh at us. Don't pay tax. And Steve Jobs was a complete it. monster and, and wanted slave labor and wouldn't let his kids have iPads and admitted it was a brain damage to the public. Had a kid and paid the woman $500 after trying to sue her in welfare. It's just it's so such insanity. They would spend months in depositions and stuff not to pay some money money. Yeah, like $500. And he's, he's worth billions. I mean, these people... But then we're bad, though. We're the bad ones. And, and it's okay, though, because Apple... The Rockefellers and the Gettys would have pay phones in their houses and wouldn't let their guests use a telephone. But then we're not paying enough. Warren Buffett basically pays nothing. And then lobbies all day to have taxes raised, but he's exempt. Yeah. I mean, this, he is a monster saying. pig. He is a monster demon. But do you see they turned the debate around on us, though? Because now, Alex, you're bad because you don't want to let immigrants flood into your country. And you're bad because you... Well, I mean, I want like skilled that. immigrants. I don't care what color somebody is. But, man, let me tell you, radical Islam is telling me my wife's got to wear a hood over her head and can't drive a car. And my kids, you know, have to do what they say. And I can't listen to rock and roll if I want. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And it's the left promoting these people coming in. But the left tells me I can't say boy or girl. Right. And I mean, it's freakish. It's freakville. And they disregard their moral obligations to help these people in ways that matter, which we just covered. That'll never be done. But notice the debate is not about that. It's not about why don't we bring industry to Africa. It's why are we bad? <sighs> they have flipped the debate 100 percent and they have succeeded in doing so. And you're highlighting it right now. They have turned it on us. It's about That's right. us now. Paul Joseph Watson, incredible job. I want to let you get back to writing articles and covering things. Other tidbits of this we haven't covered. Is there any way... Most countries didn't vote to be part of the EU. The UK didn't get to vote. You got major buildup to have a vote, get out of the uh, EU. The EU is going into total tyranny. They're admitting in mainstream news, the Telegraph today, that the EU is using this to become a super state and remove any sovereignty and to become a dictatorship. So we see that the end game of this, is there any way to stop it? I mean, can't people in government in Europe just stop complying? Why do the leftists that control government enjoy destroying themselves. I don't understand it. I, I think it's actually a kind of fetish, Alex. I think it's, I mean, we've had this term conservative over the past couple of months. This is political cuckolding. If you look into that, I don't want to get into it too deeply because it's probably not family friendly, but I think it's a No, it is. It's a form of domination. It, it, it is a sick fetish. It's funny you said that. Yeah. But I think wider <laughs> solutions, the good, the good news is the most recent poll for the first time has found that the majority of British citizens are going to vote to get out of the EU. Past three years, we've had massive rejection of the EU. If that continues, we're going to get control back over our national border and immigration policies. 
um, to a greater extent. So that's good news if we can carry on that course. Geopolitically, let's stop overthrowing secular governments in the Middle East and replacing them with jihadist radical Islamists, which is what caused this refugee crisis in the first place. How about that for a good idea? And then domestically, it's just about, you know, I'm not ashamed to be proud of where I was born and where I come from. I'm not ashamed of the Enlightenment. I'm not ashamed of the Industrial Revolution. I'm not ashamed of the Magna Carta. I'm not ashamed of freedom and liberty. So it's just about reasserting those principles, voting on those principles while we've still got the chance to do it in the face of these mass hordes of migrants that are going to vote for bigger government. And the solution lies in that. So there's still hope yet. Um, but obviously, you know, you had Paulson the other day. You should probably play the video. Wealth inequality is what has caused much of this unrest, not only in America, but across the world. He was laughing. He was up at a meeting with Sheryl Sandberg and these other CEOs saying, we increase the wealth gap. We increase wealth inequality while laughing his head off at it. So again, they're, told, they're bragging about it. They're laughing about it, as you said. So it's about pointing out who's behind it, voting to reject this EU tyranny, which has brought in this imposed multiculturalism. And eventually, I think there's just going to be a clash of civilizations. I think, you know, it might not be for 10, 20, 30 years, but that's the only way it's going to figure itself out in the end, I'm afraid. Well, I, it's a couple of years, Paul. Everything is accelerating. It, things compact historically, but definitely this is going to be an interesting time to be alive. Last week, I went and saw a film not knowing I'm in it. Uh, that's uh, won some Sundance Awards and others. It's the best of enemies. William F. Buckley and Gore Vidal. And, uh, of course, I knew Gore Vidal. He was a frequent guest on the show. And uh, I didn't agree with a lot of his politics, but he liked the fact that I exposed that 9-11 was an inside job. So I interviewed him in person six or seven times on radio. But I tell you, the guy that comes out as the good guy is William F. Buckley in that movie. But in it, Gore Vidal's playing a money war and class envy with William F. Buckley in this debate. And Buckley's like, you're worth 10 times more money than me. My family actually made its money. You've been given your money. But I mean, and that's what he said in the actual debate. I went and watched more of it. They, they didn't even show that in the film. But Buckley's just amazed at all this. And he then expands on it. But Gore Vidal's like, we've got 7% of the public that's got 38%, something like that. It was like 6 7% has almost 40% of the wealth, and that's wrong. We need to redistribute it. Well, under the redistribution, we got 1% with like 80% of it. But, but they act like that 1% of these rich people, no, no, most of the 1% are worth $150,000, $200,000 a year. That's the person that gets their hair done, their nails done, buys a car, buys a boat, goes to your restaurant. I mean, we want to make that bigger. But it's, you see it's, how they switched it, though. They it, switched it that you're bad, not they're bad, not the 0.001% that actually controls and runs everything. Well, it's worse than that. We did the math. It's 0 0.00000024. 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 right. So it's, it's like they're the ones that have most of the wealth, and they're the ones all calling for socialism. But you're bad, and the plumber that makes $150,000 a year that works 16 hours He's a got day. four guys working for him. Took him 20 years of quality with the right people uh, to, to have the clientele. Loot his house. He's horrible. No, it's all a distraction. Just like the corporations pay no tax, those people, the 0.000002% or whatever, they don't pay any tax. They control tons of stuff. They do horrible things. And then they make the 1%, which is the plumber that has four people working for him. Then it's his family business. He's run it for 30 years, and he finally has a little nest egg. Get rid of him. Loot his house. How dare he have money? Money can be good. Money, money is what helps good. other people. That's what America was all about. It's why you want to come here. Now it's not. Paul Watson, great job. We will continue to see your reports at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Your latest report is on DrudgeReport.com. Good to have you back uh, from your investigation. Godspeed. Thanks, Alex. There goes Paul Joseph Watson. More and more, I just have him ride shotgun with me where we go back and forth. I talk five minutes, he talks five minutes. And you know, that, that's why I'm getting more you guys, the riders, in here uh, on the air. You've got some health news we're going to get to in the next break. Uh, we got uh, McAfee popping in. I talked to him last night. He's an interesting announcement. So we got John McAfee joining us. Um, I'm going to skip this network break, but the last one I'm skipping this week. I, I am not going to skip more breaks this week. I'm going to get good about this, but I've gotten behind today, so I'm going to do it. Um, before we get into this huge health news, some of it really interesting and ties into the deindustrialization and the globalist plan and why they want to do that. This is a key piece of intel. 
let's talk about knockout because this is one from one of the largest organic manufacturers in the country. They said, yeah, usually people just put melatonin or valerian together. Max, we put eight different things with that in. This isn't sluggish when you wake up in the morning, uh, but I took it when I went to Europe. I've taken it when I go on other trips when I can't fall asleep on a plane. I take it an hour later, I just want to go to sleep. And I ended up sleeping on the way back from Europe eight hours. I've never on a transcontinental flight been able to sleep more than two, three hours. And I don't, I've taken pills before just to see what they do. Uh, feel horrible for six hours after I wake up groggy. Tell folks Anthony Gucciardi because knockout just came back in uh, today. The truck arrived this morning from the lab and we got a larger amount of it this time because it sold out in just a few days and we got a smaller uh, quantity. Tell people and we've got rave reviews. Folks can see the reviews at InfoWarsLife.com how important sleep is. It's linked to getting cancer. It's linked to being angry. It's, it's linked to having health problems, aging. But the drugs, the sleeping pills and things don't give you real deep sleep, folks. Look it up. Natural valerian root and things like melatonin, L-tryptophan, chamomile flower extract, uh, lemon balm, leaf extract, hops flower extract, L-theanine and others, uh, gamma acid and other things absolutely works with your brain to just get you to turn loose and have deep, restful, delicious sleep. That's why I've had so much energy. Tell folks about Knockout Anthony. Well, I know you're excited to have it back because you ask every single day if it's back because you're out of your bottle. But yeah, so most people are catching on to the reality that melatonin is what you need. And it just came out today actually in the news. I believe I did print it here. Yes. Light from smartphones and tablets affects melatonin levels. That's what we've always told you, it eats your brain. Right, so this is out actually this weekend. It's New York Times, the Research isn't it? offers, yep, a compelling reason for parents to ban smartphones, tablets, and laptops in their children's bedroom at night. The bright light of these devices may lower levels of melatonin, a hormone that prompts sleep. So really all light, though. But this is right in your face before you go to bed. Well, it's you're artificial on, LED style. Phone. It's yeah. very toxic. You're on your phone. You're on your iPad. You're on your Kindle whatever. It's emitting light into your brain. And your body says, oh, it's still light out. I don't need to go to sleep. And that's why light pollution is such a big issue. If you're sleeping with the lights on, your melatonin production is, is drastically destroyed, especially when you sleep with lights on. Because you want complete darkness. And if you're not getting complete darkness, you're not going to get that restful sleep. So here's the thing, though. People are catching on, and they're taking melatonin. Here's an article today as well. Students gaining taste for melatonin supplements to combat fatigue. Many students and in institutes of higher learning suffer from sleep deprivation and blah, blah, blah. They're and again, because the gut is so dead, you're not producing enough of it in the stomach uh, for the brain. Yep, and that's linked up in this study from today. Study too little sleep increases your risk of catching a cold. It's all linked up to your immune system. But, 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 melatonin works for a lot of people. Doesn't work for everybody. Well, what, what the studies have found, because I've done deep research on this, so have you. We've had scientists and brain doctors, uh, you name it on. It stops working after a while. Right. That's why you've got to fuse it with exercise, with having a dark room, uh, with having a fan on or white noise, and something like knockout. Valerian root extract. Because we know that, I mean, melatonin is excellent. It's a, it's a base ingredient. Got to have it. But we knew that we wanted to have a more complete profile on this product, not just melatonin. I mean, you could get melatonin for pretty much the same price, but this has multiple ingredients like valerian root extract, L-tryptophan, lemon balm leaf. This extract. has a good yeah. dose. Most of the pills out there are three milligrams. Ours is three milligrams of melatonin. L-tryptophan, 15 milligrams. That's what's in turkey. That's what a big meat meal makes you sleepy. Uh, calomel root extract, 18 milligrams. Uh, lemon balm, 45 milligrams. Valerian root, 30 milligrams. Uh, L-theanine, 100 milligrams. I mean, this this is a strong dose, And folks. here's the cool thing, too, though. Melatonin, we have pure melatonin in it. But then L-tryptophan, what people don't understand, oh, I take it and I, I get sleepy. That's because it naturally converts into melatonin, right? So we have another layer there of L-tryptophan that's going to be converted by your body naturally into the melatonin that you need. And then the valerian root extract, I mean, that's used as far back as Greece and Rome. Uh, the Greek physician Galen dubbed a valerian root as a remedy for sleeplessness and insomnia. So this has been used forever. We're just taking all the things that are known to work. And, and listen, I went to the store. This is about two years ago, and I said, I want to sleep it. I don't sleep it. Uh, I've been to Whole Foods. Everything has one ingredient or maybe two. Why don't they fuse it all? Because I was sitting there with my kids some nights. If, you know, they'd eaten some sugar too late or whatever, give them a couple different pills. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I want to give them one thing. Yeah. So that's what we did. It's just one deal. It's very affordable, very low cost. A bottle of melatonin is the cost of this, and 
The melatonin I have at home is three milligrams. Yeah, I know. And this has a ton of more.